All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Henry. If I can just get a quick audio check on this, we will get the webinar started. Excellent. Thanks, guys. So it looks like audio is coming through clear. Hey, Jason, good to see you. Things going quite well today, despite a few little tech issues this morning. I'm getting all that fixed up, and we should be good to go this afternoon. So um, once again, this webinar is open to the public. So we had a, a couple little issues this morning with the sign-up stuff. I'll go ahead and get you guys the link. So if you want to try signing up again, if you weren't able to get that done this morning, I'm going to go ahead and send that link out one more time now. It will be up um, throughout the entire day. So, or not the entire day, but you know, you can try it throughout the uh, webinar today. So that's been posted, and if you haven't had a chance to sign up, like I said, you can try it again. The site is up and functional now, so you can give that a run. <laughs> yep, absolutely, Jason. So. I uh, definitely appreciate you guys joining us here in this new room today. It worked out a little different than we had planned, but we'll go ahead and kind of start looking at a couple different things. And, of course, if you're new to the site, we'll show you some of the stuff that we're working with on there. Questions. I'm an experienced options trader. Is this just a beginner's class? Are we reviewing the existing positions before the close? The webinar today is, is going to be focused on mainly the education side. We're not going to look at a whole lot of live trades unless something you know groundbreaking sets up or something that we really need to take a look at. And it's going to be covering John's five primary option setups. So, you know, even if you're an experienced options trader, I think it will provide some good information on how John is using these signals and how he's trading this market. So I think at any level, you'll find this to be an informative webinar. If you're having any issues downloading the software, you can send me an email henry at simpleroptions.com, and I'll be happy to you know, kind of help you download that or see what's going on with it. If you get any kind of a security warning or anything like that, I assure you the software is perfectly fine. Um, it's just not verified through VeriSign, which is a, a big, long process to get some of that stuff to go away. Yeah, absolutely, Aaron. I'm pretty sure you've got my email address, so just send me over a message, and I'll be happy to get you set up. If you lose uh, audio in the webinar, you can check your GoToWebinar audio settings and just make sure it's set to use the correct audio output. You can also try exiting and re-entering the trade room. So like I said, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of trading this afternoon, but I do want to show you guys some of the just tips and tricks that you may not know about some of your platforms, answer any questions you may have. And then, of course, John will be doing most of the options analysis this afternoon. So one of the things that I've got going on right here that's kind of interesting is I've got TradeStation 9.1 here on the right-hand side, and then I've got TradeStation 9.0 on the left-hand side. As users of TradeStation probably know, you can't actually run two instances or two different versions of TradeStation on the same machine. You can only have one active environment at a time. But when version 9.1 came out, you know, I can't sacrifice potentially having problems with an upgrade. So what we do is you can put um, another installation into a virtual machine. Virtual machines, like if you're on a Mac and you want to run Windows, you know, that's one of the most common questions we get, people considering buying a Mac, but then worry about all the trading applications not being able to work. It's essentially the same thing. So you just create this virtual environment, and you can see that I've got a start menu down here. And this is basically just like having a computer inside a computer. So now I've got version 9.0 that I can work with as my primary platform, you know, the one that's been stable for months that I can keep using. And then version 9.1 to test out some of the new features you know, and see if that's going to work out for me. Something else that you may want to note, if you are a TradeStation user and you have upgraded to version 9.1, uh, one of the biggest enhancements that they brought with the platform was the ability to use multiple cores. So that's some of the technology that's becoming you know, very prevalent. Any PC that you go out and buy today is going to have multiple cores. So TradeStation can now take advantage of that. 9.1 is the first version to include that. By default, that option is not selected. 
So even if you go and you upgrade your platform, you're still basically, I mean, you're not taking the full advantage of what it has to offer. So I showed this in one of the simpler options videos last night. But if you just come down and right click on your task or fire up your task manager from your start menu here, if you see that you've got multiple CPU cores here, that lets you know that your PC has multiple cores and will take advantage of this new functionality in TradeStation. If you only see one, make sure that in CPU history, you've got selected to show one graph per CPU. That's a quick way to check. And then what you want to do is make sure you have an active chart selected. Come to View, and then Chart Analysis Preferences. And then just make sure you're enabling the use of multiple CPU cores. So then your easy language strategies, the indicators you have on the charts will run smoother. And then it's also designed to handle a heavy influx of market activity better. So when all that data hits your platform, when the market really gets moving, that will help it, help it handle it better. So that's just one uh, you know, important tech tip to note. And I just think it's crazy that that's one of the nicest things about this new version, and it's not enabled by default. I think they did it because it can um, mess with some of your custom programming strategies. But as a general rule, I think it's going to be OK for everyone to upgrade that. So I'm going to try to go back and forth between looking at the questions and then showing you guys a few things. And then John will be on here shortly. Let's see. If I want to sell an option at a certain limit price, how do I calculate the sell limit price? OK, so that's as good a question as any. We get that one pretty often. And it's a good thing to know. So over here in Thinkorswim, let's take a look at an example. So TLT is one that we've got on the radar. We're going to be looking at this one for the video update on Monday because we're looking to set up a buy in TLT. We've had, a, we've had a pretty nice uptrend, of course, since you know, we're kind of really forming more of a wedge pattern here after we kind of came down and had this test of uh, support after you know, the second bailout was approved for Europe. That's when we had this spike down in TLT. We've rallied since, and now we're kind of just consolidating into a wedge. But one of the main signals that we watch for is the squeeze. So now we've got this squeeze on the daily chart. You can see this here in the bottom right-hand corner of my charts. And then also, if you flip down to a weekly, we've got a squeeze on this position as well. So OK, so now we've established the bias that we do at least want to come in here and look at potential areas to buy this. What's one way we could decide on a contract and a price for that contract? Well, and once again, this is just a very simple way of doing it. We'll have a more precise analysis in Monday's video. But what we can do is come down to our studies. I'm going to edit my studies and add in a moving average here. We like to use the 13 period exponential moving average as a uh, good mean price, so to speak. Now in this case, we're coming up to it more of a resistance level. Let's take a look at it on the weekly. That one's actually a little bit close to the current prices, so it doesn't really give you a good idea of what we could look for in a price movement. Let's take a look at Apple. That'll be a good example because we're so extended in this one. So I'm going to maximize this grid cell and do the same thing. So by default, my moving average is, or that, uh, the moving average exponential is set to a 13 period. So I don't have to go in and edit it every time. That's just something I was going through and showing you there. So right here, we can see that the 13 period EMA, or the mean price for Apple, is down here at 521.31. So we're looking at about a $23 difference if we were able to get to that price. Say, obviously, Apple's in a pretty nice uptrend here, and you want to try and pick that one back up. You think we're going to find support at this level. So what we can do is come over to our Make sure we've got the right ticker in place. So we'll up there. And let's take a look at the March series. So once we drop that down, then you're going to want to come over to your layout and select theoretical price or Theo price mark. And then you've got a couple different options that you can adjust here. The way we look at this for the portfolio, and when you see prices listed in the portfolio, we always calculate it off the next day. Of course, with tomorrow being Saturday, the market isn't open, so we would go over into Monday. 
say, okay, what are, you know, because you've got to take into account for uh, theta decay. So those options will erode over the weekend. So we'll put in the fifth. So now we've got our date set correctly. And now we come in and we adjust the stock price. So let's say that's roughly $23 in Apple. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And then you can see the theoretical price for what these contracts would be trading. Say, for example, with the 540 calls, currently you're at 510 by, or 1510 by 1520. A movement down that far would take you to about $4.30 on the contracts. Then, of course, you see the theoretical pricing for your puts as well. And that's how we use that tool. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. Glad you could join us this afternoon. With 9.1, are all the TTM indicators working okay? The indicators in 9.1 are working just fine. They're completely compatible with the new version of TradeStation. Now, one thing that's very important to note and why I was a little hesitant to upgrade is I have yet to find a way that we can upgrade the indicators in the current environment and keep them. Almost every time I've done the upgrade and all the users I've spoke with say, yeah, you know, they usually come back unverified and they're having all kinds of problems. Typically, you can upgrade within a build to a build and keep them. But anytime you go from something like 9.0 to 9.1 or 8.9 to 9.0, those bigger moves, you want to make sure that you've got your installer packages from the initial email that we sent you handy. Um, because if you know they don't end up working, then you can just run a reinstall, and then those indicators will work. Do you have to adjust for volatility? That's one thing that um, I was showing here in the platform and toss where we're calculating that theoretical price. Typically, I don't can adjust for volatility, and that is part of the tool to analyze that price. The only thing is volatility is a little bit harder to judge. You know, it's hard to know right now if Apple is going to come crashing down to 420 over the course of a day or two, or is going to be you know a slow grind lower. So you can adjust that, but that one's just a little bit trickier to look at as opposed to you know, the date and the price. Hi, Frank. God, glad to see you. Um, the slides from this morning's presentation will be made available. We're in the process of getting those posted up now, now that the slides come back up and everything. So once that's done and John's doing the broadcast, I'll get that solidified and then I can come back in here and show you guys where it's at. Can you give me some information about trading from Thinkorswim? Sure, Andre. And one of the other things as options traders, you know, a question that we get a lot is uh, how can I look at something in a ladder or a, you know, a matrix for these options trades? If you're sitting if you're trading options or whatever the case may be, it's just a nice way to look at it. And let's take the spiders, for example, and we'll take a look at how this works on both platforms. So say, for example, I see that the spiders are breaking down pretty nice today, and I'm going to the day trade that I can take into the close. I'm going to maximize this version 9.0 so you can get a nice full screen there. Then I'm going to right-click on the chart and come down to Create, an Option Station Analysis, and it'll use the symbol that you're currently on. So we're on the spiders, so it's going to create an option station analysis for the spiders. Now we want to look at the stock, so we'll go ahead and select that and hit OK. Give it a second to load up here, and now you can see we've got a list of these um, of all the different strikes, the prices that they're trading at, etc. Now we wouldn't want to look at the options contracts that expire today, but if you want to trade the weekly, trade the ones that were just listed yesterday and that will be expiring next Friday. Let's say, for example, we're bearish on the markets, things are kind of breaking down, so we're going to look on the put side. Um, if we look, if we use something that was deep in the money, you know, we're looking at about a delta of let's say 78 here, would take us to the 139 puts. I can then come over here and right click on this, once again come down to create, and then we'll create a matrix for SPY 120309P139. So that's <laughs> kind of a long string to just give you the exact options code. So you've got the 12 for the year, the 03 for the month, 
and then the nine for expiration, which will land you on next Friday or, let's see, yeah, okay, so that is Friday. Sometimes they list them this Saturday, depending on when they settle. But we've got the right contracts. I'm not sure why I'm hearing myself. I think someone just turned on a mic. But um, So once we've got the option selected that we want to trade, we'll come down to Create and create a matrix for that options contract. So now you've got a ladder where you've got the bid and the ask, where it's much easier to trade these contracts. It's easier to get in and out. And if you're using them on a shorter term time frame, it's a great way to look at it. Now, that's how you do that in TradeStation. Now, how are we going to do this in Thinkorswim? It's actually pretty easy in both platforms. And if we bring over Thinkorswim, we're kind of looking at the same thing. So, of course, the options chain is a little easier to get to. All you have to do is type in the ticker here in your trade tab and make sure that the options drop down uh, is expanded so you can see all your different strikes. In this case, we'll do the same thing coming over here to the spiders. Taking a look at the weekly contracts that are going to be expiring next week. So let's come back in here once again and take a look at the 139s. So it's pulling some data here. We'll give it a couple seconds to populate. Okay, so now we've got the prices on the 139 puts. In this case, all I have to do is right-click on that cell, come down to Toss Charts, and then just select which cell you want this to go to. As you can see, it may be hard to see from the broadcast, but the um, top left six cells are the ones that have kind of a black border around them. That's because over here in my charting platform, I have six windows that are open. So whichever cell I select for this contract, that's where it's going to put it. So let's just go ahead and put it down in the bottom right-hand corner. You can now see that the ticker changes from whatever I had listed before, once again, to the actual options contract, the 12.03.09.139 puts. Once you've got this part of it done, then all you need to do is come over to the right-hand side of your chart, and you've got an AT button. It stands for your active trader window, and clicking this will give you this, you know, a very similar window to what we were showing in TradeStation. Now, you know, you probably don't need to look at um, a chart of the actual options price, so we can go ahead and come, come over here and unclick chart. We're now left with strictly just the chain, and if I did want to look at something like the spiders on a five minute, then I would just take the cell next to it, drop down an intraday chart, and select that. So just a few clicks, and now you've got something where you can easily come in here and buy and sell, and a chart where you can chart your patterns. And I do have a lot of questions coming here through here, guys, so I'm going to kind of get to these as quickly as I can and answer all this stuff. Um, anything that I don't answer before John comes on, I'll make note of, and then you can either find that, um, you know, maybe we'll put some of those in the video for Monday, or we'll come back in a little bit later today and take a look at them as well. Paul asks, is this Options 101? I'm enjoying learning this, but I thought we were going to go over more of the basics. Yes, Paul, we absolutely are going to go over those option setups and the basics of them. Uh, that's what John's going to be covering with, with you this morning. He just got done uh, <laughs> taking a beating and a workout, it looks like, so he's Making, making, making a shake, and he'll probably be with us in the next 10 or 15 minutes. He's got a nice presentation ready for you guys on everything that he does as far as trading those, and I think that's where you're going to find some information that you're looking for. Okay, so um, John Lewis... You raise a very good point, and you noted there, P&L does not update and toss, and there are a lot of things that do not work for the active trader in Thinkorswim. That's a good point, and I, you know, still, this area up here does not populate. However, one thing that's nice to know, and actually a user of our chat forum pointed this out to me, is if you come over here on the volume section of this, 
you can click this and then go to customize. When you select that, you've got several different fields that by default are not in the ladder of Thinkorswim. So having P&L open is one of the most important things, especially if you're day trading. Well, I wouldn't say it's the most important thing. You can kind of get sidetracked by it, but if you want to look at it, it's nice to know what kind of movement you're getting. So all you have to do is come over here, click P&L open, add the item, and hit OK. Now you can see I've got a new column here on the right-hand side. So while it doesn't populate here in this top area, it is going to be shown in the ladder so not perfect, but a workaround, and it helped. So uh, yes, Troy, we are recording this webinar. So everything that I've shown you this fall will be able to review. And then, of course, John's slide presentation will also be able to review. And we'll get that posted up just as soon as possible. You should be able to review it over the weekend. Sure, John. And like I said, I ran into that exact same problem. And it's crazy because I talked to Thinkorswim support on two separate occasions about that, and they didn't even tell me that. I found that from another user. That's one of the things that I like the most about our chat room is it's a completely user interactive environment. You know, it's not just one moderator in there all day. Um, you know, I'll usually take a look at the charts at the open. Carolyn will come in a little bit later in the day and show what she's looking at. But we don't moderate all day. While we're not in there, you can communicate with other traders and you know we share a lot of good information. I've learned a lot from everyone in there. You know, Toss is a massive platform, and um, all of us working together figured out a lot of handy things about it. Yeah, Jean. You know, I've I've made a pretty good contact over there with Victor, who's one of their lead programmers. He was actually able to get me a Fibonacci tool. Carolyn and I spoke with him at the last Vegas Expo, and that was kind of cool. So I can show you guys that as well if you don't have it. Not perfect, exactly like we want it just yet, but it was one thing that you know I asked him, hey, can you guys get this added into the platform? He said yes, and we got it in about three months. So that's kind of exciting to see that you know the little guys can uh, make an impact on some platform functionality. And what they added is if we're sitting here and we're just taking a look at, and this is not going to be you know, anything real technical, just an example once again, but if we come down here and we grab our Fibonacci retracements, let's take a look at this most recent swing. Another thing that's very handy with this Fibonacci stuff are any drawing tools that you're using on your chart. So like right now, for example, if I draw the fibs, you'll see that they'll stick pretty much anywhere. So if I wanted to make sure I grab the exact correct high, you know, I would come in here and say, okay, looking at the high of that bar, 137.99, then either make sure I drag it perfectly or come in and manually adjust the price. It's a lot easier if you just come over to your style, go to settings, and under the primary or the general tab of your settings, you've got a drawing snapping option. Make sure OHLC is selected, hit apply and OK, and then this tool will actually snap to the tops and bottoms of your charts. You can see when you get close to one of the bars, they snap into place. And then for the fib work, you're going to have correct high and low of that bar. So that makes it much, especially if you're doing a lot of these, to be able to just come in and quickly grab those highs and lows. So now that we've got the retracement drawn, let's say for whatever reason, Okay, we've got a pretty good idea of where the 50% retracement would be because we've got the 382 and the 618. Let's go ahead and get rid of that 50. Well, now you can just come in here and right-click, hide curve. In this case, we're on the 50%. That will vary depending on which uh, retracement you're hiding. So we'll just hide that one. And that's one way that you can kind of clean up your charts. And what we look for in these setups, and you guys are going to see this if you're in the room, is clustering of zones. So you would take the same tool, we still got our Fibonacci retracement tool selected, and if we're looking at a couple different swings, you can see that as these start to populate, we look for clustering areas, but you can also see there's going to be a lot of um, kind of noise on the chart as these start to bunch up. So what we'll do is, you know, you've got all these on there, and then if we kind of kept rallying and took out the 382, well, then you just come in and hide that curve, hide that curve, 
and then it just makes that kind of analysis much easier. So, like I said, Victor got that into the platform for us. Not exactly what we were looking for, but it's definitely helpful, and that's one nice thing we can do. Then again, so this is you know interesting. So if you've got these drawing levels on your charts, one of the cool things about Thinkorswim, say for example you're using this at work. You've gone through and you've done a lot of painstaking drawings. You've got everything set up exactly the way you want. And you really don't want to have to do it again when you get to your charts at home. What you can do is come in here and right click and under drawings, save a drawings set. We could give this something like five minute fibs and then hit over. Now we have saved all of these drawings into kind of like a, a server side setting, so to speak. So those drawings aren't stored on your local computer. They're stored with Thinkorswim. So if you're at the office, you've drawn all this up, and then you come back home, we'll go ahead and just reset this chart to where it's completely clean. You type in the spiders. We pull so much data in this office. It's crazy. <laughs> like John, I think Carolyn was saying earlier, we need to have an internet connection for each of us. But all right, finally got some data here on the spiders. So what I can do is now right click, go down to drawings, and load a drawings set. You can see now I've got the five minute fibs, which is just the name that I had given those drawings. And when I click that, they're all applied on the chart exactly as I left them before. Now, of course, they're bunched up because we're on a daily. That's why anytime I save a drawing set, I like to also save the name with the time frame. Since I saved the five minute, I know that I need to drop that down to a five minute for it to make sense. All your drawings are preserved exactly as they were. Yeah, Jess, so <laughs> uh, that worked out perfect, and hopefully that answered your question. So that's kind of a useful feature of the platform. No, Steve, the, um, the TTM room does not support that functionality. Our room is the only one right now that has the, the user interaction. Yeah, Don, I'm glad you found that helpful. Like I said, when I, Brian showed it to me. So kind of a cool way to use it And because I, I found all the time, you know, I put all this work into these drawings, I'm at the house, and then you have to do it again. It really takes up a lot of time, but just having that done, and that goes for anything. So any drawing levels you put on this, you can take a look at. So look how easy it is to switch between something like this on the five-minute chart. I've got all of my fibs drawn over to weekly resistance. So now you saw that I had a different drawing set on that chart, or a different drawing set that was saved. So I'm just going to go to drawings. I'm going to go ahead and delete all drawings. Those are cleared off the chart. I'm going to switch over to a weekly. I'm going to go back to my other drawing set and load up weekly resistance. And then I've got these key levels here that we've noted already ready to go. If I want to zoom in and take a look at this, this is another thing that's just, to me, it's uh, awe-inspiring how close some of this work gets. So I'll pan down to what we're looking at. So the levels that I had noted here on the weekly SPY chart was 138.19. Or actually, I think... Yeah, 138.17, I think, was what we'd actually modified that price to. But it came just two cents over that, and now we're trying to see if we can get some kind of a correction. If you look at it on the daily chart, this is what I'm watching. So kind of torn between two zones. I mean, in a perfect world, we can start maybe getting a close below this bar and start for a correction. That's what I'm kind of watching. So if we close below there, Maybe it's time for us, this pullback we've been waiting so long for. On the other hand, if we flip back over and close back above that price, uh, you know, then I'm going to stop looking at short positions. Okay, I'm brand new, just trying to learn, and I have think or swim. Do I also need trade station? No, Jackie. And actually, if you're brand new to options, and you already have Thinkorswim, 
I would advise you to not open a TradeStation account. You know, this one platform is very powerful. It's got everything that you need to trade options. You've got five of our primary studies already built into the platform. And, you know, you're going to have your plenty to learn just from Thinkorswim. If you also open a TradeStation account, then you're going to be looking at additional data feeds and a whole other platform to learn. You know, that's one of the most common questions that we, or not common questions, but people are making these transitions from one platform to another, and you're having to relearn the way you do everything. Just like when we looked at that particular spider put contract, um, you know, it's a, you can do what you want to do in both platforms, but there's a completely different set of instructions to get there. So if you've got TOS, stick with that, learn that, and I think that'll put you ahead in the game. Would you repeat where to check on TradeStation whether the program supports multiple cores? Sure, Ed. I'll flip back over to that for you. I'm going to go ahead and get my thinkorswim out of the way. We're going to restore the size of TradeStation 9.0, kind of put it over here on the side, maximize this virtual environment with TradeStation 9.1, and you'll see this. I mean, you can tell if I restore this and get this out of the way. This is just a computer inside a computer. Like I don't have a start menu down here. This is the you know machine that's actually running GoToWebinar. This is just a program, and you can see that there in the Parallels desktop. I can check out the performance of this virtual environment. I can look at a summary of it. So these are all the resources that I've allocated from my primary machine to share with it. So that's how that works. If you want to check and see if your platform has multiple cores or more if your computer has it, if it's anything within the last two years, you're going to have a multi-core PC. If you're kind of borderline or you're not sure, you can come down here to your start menu and just right click in a blank area. You're going to get a menu that has the start task manager. And under the performance tab, it'll show you how many cores you have. In this case, my computer has eight cores. I've dedicated four of them to the virtual machine. So I can see this here. I've got these clearly labeled four graphs. Okay, I know that this machine has that ability. If you only see one, make sure that you come in here to view, CPU history, and one graph per CPU. You can combine those four into one, but I typically split them up. So once you've confirmed that, you can come into the platform. You're going to want to make sure you have an active window selected. So if you're in a radar screen or something like that, it won't show up. But click a uh, active window here, and then come into View, Chart, Analysis, Preference. And then under your General tab, it's there at the bottom. Enable use of multiple CPU cores. Keep in mind that you have to restart the platform for that to take effect. But that is essentially one of the best things about the new version of TradeStation, and that is not enabled by default. <laughs>